me see here. Hello, 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 hello. I think I could, I think, I think, I think it's working now. I think the sound is working now. I think it's working now. Let's see. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I'm probably I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to edit this um, video. I'm going to have to edit this video. I'm going to have to go back from the top. I'm going to have to go back from the top on this. I I, I should have used my microphone from the stop, but start. But um, I'm going to have to do this again, which is cool. But um, I'm going to have to edit this video, which is fine. So a lot of what I showed, it just didn't, it didn't correlate. Um, but what I did was basically, I'm going to go back to where, where, where I went. Because what I was showing, I was talking about wealth, the wealth divide in this country. And I was talking about basically, um, you know, why, why the wealth divide is so, so big. And I was showing these this chart here. So this is this is the racial this is the racial wealth divide. Let me see if I got sound. Let me see here. Yeah, so we good. So yeah, this was this was I mean pretty much this is the chart that, <clears throat> that I was showing earlier. I got that Rona cough. Let me let me take some of my CBD oil, my lemon flavor CBD CBD oil. I had to pull this from my 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 website alsherbs.com because I was going through all kind of legal legal problems with um credit card processing. So they was like basically long story short, you got to pull this product unless you can show that you have like proper paperwork to sell CBD oil cuz because it's just I don't know. It's a problem, but I still sell it because CBD oil is federally legal. I just you just have to reach out to me um, via my my links that I put in my my description videos and I can I can send it to you. If you just pay, you just pay me like basically twenty five dollars and you're, if you're in the U.S., I can ship it to you. But it's pretty good. It's still my favorite, my favorite go to product. But um, yeah, I was talking about the wealth divide. So this was from 1983 to 2016. This is pretty, pretty, pretty uh, good, good stuff here. So you got 84,000, the, the overall wealth of the everybody in the country, 1983. Then you have um, 2016, a drop off of four of three, three thousand to 80, 81,000. And this is where you get into the actual racial groups. So this is this is pretty, pretty significant. So 1983 average um, household wealth was one hundred ten thousand dollars. And then uh, 2016 is shot up to basically one hundred forty six thousand. This is inequality.org. Okay. So um as you can see how low it is as far as 1983, the average wealth was seven thousand dollars for black people. Okay, so I was saying before this is why the man that lives in Atlanta with the suits and the fragrances and the, the glasses and the lights in the background is is the people you know don't a lot of people don't like them they're entertained by watching them but they don't like his they don't like the fact that uh it's so hard to get a high value man or whatever because this is this is why 
Cause it ain't it ain't hardly no high value men. It's 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 so many broke men. It's ridiculous. It's like people that are so broke that they can't even afford. I mean, just like most people, most people had seven thousand dollars, depending on where you where you were in in nineteen eighty three. People were actually making money, and the wealth gap was um, it was getting better because you had the the like I said before, you had the Housing Act, you had the Mortgage Act, because they they made it unlawful for black people to actually get um, excluded from getting a mortgage, from actually getting turned down for housing. So it became a federal law that you couldn't do that. So you would get sued by the federal government. You could you would get in, you know, hot water if you, you know, defied that law. But they still did it. But they made it a crime. So black people were able to, you know, take the money that they had and move to different neighborhoods and the suburbs and stuff like that. This is all from the 80s. And a lot of black people. They say older black people, 50 and 60 years old, they say that a lot collectively, that's when black people really start making money was the 80s. So it's just like it's just on aggregate. Seven thousand dollars was the overall wealth divide as far as that was how much they made. Seven thousand dollars. So 2016, it dropped off. Three thousand dollars is the average wealth. So this is why they have a problem with the guy with the glasses and the suits in, in Atlanta, because it basically a lot of people are broke. A lot of people front. They like to they like to pretend that they are rich. Everybody wants to pretend that they're rich. They're not rich. They're poor. They're broke. I mean, that's why, you know, pretty much people people don't they don't like the title of my channel. Because I don't I don't choose to live in a fantasy world. A long time ago, I mean I used to live in a fantasy world, but I I I, I you know 2008 happened, the two how 2008 um market collapse, and I decided to learn as much as I could about wealth, about financing finances, personal finances, business finance, as much as I could, economics. I made this a mission from 2008 because I basically I vow for this never to happen to me again and understand if it did happen, what to do, how to do it and when to do it. And, you know, um, I choose not to live in the fantasy world. So, you know, basically um, a lot of people do live in the fantasy world. They like to pretend that they have money and they don't. And they try to, you know, this, the young people now call it capping. A lot of people like to cap, you know, and, and try to, you know, make it seem. Because what capping means is, is that, uh, you know, when you say when you say no cap, that means that you that is actually real. So you actually ain't lying. But when you put the cap on your front, you pretend it. OK, so a lot of people like to kill. A lot of people like the cap. You know what I'm saying, and that's why, like, like, like I was saying before, I was on, I listen to other people on YouTube, and um, somebody was like, basically, why do you call yourself the broke genius? You should call yourself the rich genius. I was, and I basically told them, I choose not to live in fantasy land, and they knew exactly what I was talking about because, uh, I mean, basically, uh, you know. That just, I mean, I, they, I got no rebuttal from that, you know, because it's like pretty much she knew exactly what she was talking about. She knew exactly what I meant by that, because, you know, that's that's the thing with this whole high value topic. Right. People want to they want to say, oh, I'm how value you. I'm so high value. I'm how value because I could jump three feet. I can tie my shoes and walk backwards. No. <laughs> I value is 100k plus 100k plus and then let me let me go let me go into my little sites or whatever cuz I got I got some sites that I can go to that I can break this whole thing this whole thing down you know cuz you know people need to know
that actually goes into how many people. Um, actually, let me go to my because it's already on my um. Let's go to my um. That's because one part of part of the reasons why I have my blog is because it's like a reference. It's a reference for me, you know. So that's a go to for when I need statistics or certain articles and stuff like this, like a repository for my articles. So you know what? It's probably on my um my 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 social media page, my Facebook page. So let me actually go to other page. Okay. So um <clears throat> basically 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 Um, this is really, really far out there. I don't know if I got, it's probably way, way far away. Um, yeah, definitely check out, check out my, uh, my Facebook, um, page for my channel. A lot of, a lot of stuff I don't put on my blog, a little funny stuff as well. Informational stuff is on there. Uh, it's probably way far back, but let me see here. You know, I got like stuff like as far as like, um, what, what the upper class actually do, you know, and stuff. Um, but I want to actually show you cause showing is better than telling, you know, show, showing your work is better than that better than actually telling in my opinion um let me see here so yeah let me see let me check the volume of, uh, yeah it's still working so as long as that's as long as that's working that's good volume is working so This is this is this is a uh, this is the woman that basically she owns. Uh, you know what? My sharing is not. It's the screen is not that big. I just noticed that. Let me change the sharing. It's not that big. So let me go to. Let me see here how that looks. Let me see. I mean. I'm a newbie, man. I don't really, I really don't. I I probably been going live for like with this with this stream yard for like probably maybe a couple months. Let me see how this looks. Yeah, that's that's good right there. So yeah, uh, back to back to my other back to this lady or whatever right here so let me see if that how, how that shows oh, so yeah uh, yeah that shows pretty good so you should be able to see that yeah so this this is this is a hundred octane woman right here this is the this is the uh co-owner of bt um this is john um robert johnson's ex-wife Okay, she's worth a hundred uh, eight hundred and twenty million dollars. So she she might knock she might be the next billionaire. But this is an article. This is in the Economist. This talks about America's black upper class and you know how they deal with Black Lives Matter. Okay, and this this guy he wrote a book on the black upper class. Lawrence Otis Graham. You want to look at him? He's got a couple YouTube videos. He's got a black. Um, he's got a um a black perspective on the upper class that a lot of people don't know. So um I say all that to say basically um as I still I was looking for that post as far as how much the inequality let me try then let me try to find me try to find um find that article 
because I mean I know I saved it. Let me see if it's in my bookmarks. Let me see here. I know I saved it somewhere because it was it was very um See here if I could pull that same article up here. And then here's another thing, but that's that goes into that goes into another another can of seaweed seaweeds. This talks about the one percent, but nobody really talks about the zero point one percent. You know what I'm saying? Like pretty much um the zero one percent. I mean the one percent is like Let's see what they say about the one percent. So they say that, okay, yeah, this is pretty good right here. This is pretty juicy. This is pretty juicy right here. Let me see. Let me see how this how this is showing here. It's pretty juicy. It's pretty juicy here. So let me try to see if I can adjust the, the zoom on here. Just the zoom on here. All right. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so this is the top 1% divided into four groups by income. U.S. household in 2015, excluding capital gains. So the income threshold to get into each group. So this is pretty, pretty juicy right here. You know, this is pretty juicy. So 0.5%, to get into 0.5%. To one percentile, four hundred eighty thousand. I mean, four hundred eight thousand. So, um, to be to the to the zero point one percent to the zero point five percent is six hundred thousand um, dollars. It says excluding capital gains. So this is this is from actual income. Now moving along to zero point zero one percent to zero point one percent one point six million dollars in the top zero point zero one percent seven point five million dollars. Okay, so these these this is like these people are like these people you know like you know people talk about like people that are out of debt they're 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 aliens. These people are dinosaurs. These are dinosaurs. Okay. These uh, people are in the top one percentile and even top 0.01%. They make $7.5 million a year. Okay. These are dinosaurs. Okay. So um, I'm still, let me see here if I can find. I think this is the, uh, this is the page that I was looking for. This is no, this is not it. So let me see here. Vanity Fair. Let's see, okay. Uh, Vanity Fair. Let's see what Vanity Fair talking about. I know it was like it was like USA Today. It's USA Today. USA Today. Yeah, there it go. Yeah, this is it because I just went there. I was looking at this for research. Okay. And then I guess it goes to the Pew Research Center. I think this is probably where I wanted to go. Let's see here. Well, Well, this is some useful information. We can go with this. So this this article was written February 7, 2020. Rising 
economic inequality in the United States has become a central issue in the race for de democratic presidential nomination and discussions about policy interventions that might help address it are likely to remain at the forefront in the 2020 general election. As the debates continue, here are some of the basic facts about how e economic inequality has changed over time and the, how the U.S. compares globally. Over the past 50 years, the highest earning 20% of the U.S. households have steadily brought in a larger share of the country's total income. In 2018, households in the top fifth earners with incomes of 130,000 or more a year brought in 52% of all the U.S. income, more than the lower four-fifths combined. Okay, so 1968, by the comparison, the top earner earning 20% of households brought in 43% of the nation's income, while those in the lower four income quintiles accounted for 56%. Okay. Number two, income inequality in the U.S. is the highest of all the G7 nations. According to the data from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, to compare income inequalities across the countries, OECD use, uses the Gini coefficient, a commonly used measure ranging from zero or perfect equality to 1% or complete inequality. In 2017, the U.S. had a Gini coefficient of 0 0.434 and other G nations like the Gini, the Gini range from 0 0.326 in France to 0 0.392 in the U.K. Globally, the Gini ranges from the lows of 0 0.25 in some Eastern European countries to highs of 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 in countries in Southern Africa, according to World Bank estimates. U.S. has highest level of income inequality among G7 countries. So U.S. is at the top for 0 0.434. The U.K. is below them. Um, by you um uh, 0 0.392 then italy 0 0.373 japan 0 0.363 canada 0 0.352 germany 0 0.351 france 0 0.326 so you the us is the most in equal uh country in the world as far as G6s, I mean G7s. So uh, number three, the black white income gap in the U.S. has persisted over time. The differences in medium household incomes between white and black Americans, I talked about this on the other the other slide, the other graphs, has grown from about 23,000 in 1970 to roughly 33,000 in 2008. Let's pause on this for station identity. Uh, this is average. This is the average. Like, this is just as far as incomes. This is not wealth. This is income. So, where do you where are all these hundred thousand fifty thousand dollar jobs even fifty thousand dollar jobs when on average okay to date thirty three thousand dollars is the average and that's household that's everybody in the house that's mom that's mom dad if mom if if dad is there that's that's everybody ain't even just one person that's the whole household 
the income is thirty three thousand dollars. This is this is the average income. So the median black household income was sixty one percent of the median white household income in 2008, up modestly from 56 percent in 1970, but down 63 percent as of 2007 before the Great Recession. So, like I said, that's why I tried to learn everything I can from that Great Recession. I mean, because it hit a lot of people really hard, including myself. Um, but, you know, this is this is saying, you know, basically you have you have from 1970, the average income is 54,000. The black income is 30,000. And now white income is 84,000. Black income is fifty one thousand. Um, as far as household income in dollars, the income gap. <clears throat> so, basically, yeah, this is this is pretty bad. Um, you know, yeah. So uh, going back to going back to the trends and, and, and going back to that article that I was looking at before, wealth inequality. Um, let's see here. It's going back to this one. You have also the Latinos, Hispanics. In 1983, they had four thousand dollars. In 2016, they shot up to six thousand dollars average as far as wealth. Now we're not talking about income. It's the difference between wealth and income. Wealth, wealth is your assets over your liabilities. So overall wealth. So if you if you if you got a hundred thousand dollars in student loans and you got fifty thousand dollars saved, you ain't got fifty thousand. You you're in debt by fifty k. You minus your negative your worth your net worth is uh your wealth is 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 uh, minus fifty thousand. Your net worth is minus fifty thousand. So collectively, and this is this is this is another reason why, like I say, I don't I choose not to live in fantasy. You know, most people, most people statistics these statistics don't lie. Most people are uh broke. They just don't have they just don't have the, the balls enough to say that they are because because it diminishes, they think it diminishes their character, you know. So like like um the first step, like in Alcohol Anonymous, is to admit that you're actually an alcoholic. So if you don't admit that you're broke, then you know it's kind of hard for you to, to work on your financial inadequacies if you don't admit the financial inadequacies. So you see Hispanics, what they did, you know, like I, I was saying before, I had a value issue. I mean, they basically, you know, basically work with you know they they basically got with uh, uh, it was basically a lot of immigrants came in and you know they crossed the border and um they they worked real hard they you know lived 14 people in one house 10 people in one house six people you know crammed up in the civic going to work going to school you know and then they moved out got a house they fixed it up and then, you know, next thing you know, they they getting the house built back in their country, sending money over overseas. I mean, not overseas, back to their country with remittances, with Western Union and stuff like that. And so, and then now they got a, a, a vacation house they can go to in in, in their in their country back home. And then they got a house over here. That's wealth. That's all of that I mentioned is wealth, man. So it's like um, 
and then they don't they're not able really to get loans um they just use cash primarily so you know they they had they able to get a bank account but then they um you know basically uh they they are they're basically getting using housing real estate and getting wealthy you know they've gotten wealthy where black people have lost their wealth in 2016 they've gained their wealth they work with each other they have businesses they they open up businesses they speak a language other than english they speak english and another language so they dual language people you know so it's a power of language so this is this is why you know that, that wealth is risen okay where where ours is 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 falling you know so you know as far as everything is concerned you know that the the whole the whole idea of it the whole dichotomy is it is basically the stats show that out of 70 people out of, I mean, a hundred people in one room, at least 80, 80% of those people, 80, 80 people are broke, are financially inadequate, have a negative net worth or barely have $3,000 to their name. Okay. So let me read this here. The median black family with just over 3,500 owns just 2% of the wealth of the nearly 147,000 median white family owns. Man, let me let me stop. Let me stop right here. 2% of the wealth of the country. God damn. Hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Man, 2%? Oh, no. That is terrible. This is disgusting. So, I mean, you own 2% of the wealth. Why is people out partying, kicking it, shooting the bobos, um, out there, you know, celebrating failure? Cause that's what this is. This is failure. Two percent of the wealth of the whole country. I mean, how many NBA players and 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 whatnot? You know, they got wealth, but like I said before, I mean, out of the one point uh, one point trillion dollars black people collectively have, to, white people have twenty two trillion. So that's like having a hot dollar in a dice game. I mean, compared to twenty two dollars. So it's like, man, I mean, 2% of the wealth of the country. See, this is why I'm talking about this. This is why I'm this is why I'm talking about this. This is a huge problem. This is a huge problem. Nobody wants to talk about, it, but I will talk about it because it should be talked about. I mean, it, this is ridiculous. 2% of the wealth Two percent. This is why this is why you can't find nobody that is high value or, you know, even even you yourself can't be high value because it's just very difficult. It's hard to start. It's hard to do anything when you have a low basis to start with. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. And. It's just like, man, I mean, like I say, according to this, ain't nobody shouldn't be buy, popping no bottles. I mean, ain't nobody should be celebrating nothing unless you getting contracts for real estate, unless you getting contracts for businesses, unless you getting contracts for uh, new government contracts for, you know, your business or whatever, unless you, you know, uh, bought some land, 
uh, you starting a new company, a LLC, shouldn't be popping no damn bottles, man. Ain't no celebration. You ain't doing nothing but celebrating failure. 2% of the wealth, this ain't, this is right now, this is 2020. 2% of the wealth Y'all cats, man, y'all, y'all, y'all wanna y'all wanna talk about pussy going in and in, in, in dick going in the pussy. That's the main talking point y'all wanna talk about. I mean, it's entertaining. I ain't gonna lie. It's very, very entertaining to watch. All that goofy, all that you know, goofy ass stuff, man. It's very entertaining. But this is the problem right here. Pussy and dick, like I said in my last video, I, I ain't got no problem with no women or getting getting sex or anything. That ain't they ain't never been a problem. This has been a problem. Thirty five hundred dollars in wealth, two percent ownership of, of, of wealth in the United States of America. Where they print out money every day. Where where basically, man, you you can just, you know, you it's you could become a millionaire overnight. Every day, every day there's so many millionaires that's made every single day. It's like 17,000 people become millionaires every single day. And this is what we this is what we have. This is why this is why they, this is why people laugh at you. This is why this is why people don't they don't, you know, they look at you, they look down on you. Because you know, it, it, it you act like everything is cool. This I'm trying to tell you, I'm the canary in the cold, man, telling you this is I can't barely breathe, man. I'm you know, I'm 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 like barely barely can breathe but you but it's i'm the canary in the coal man but yet the the coal is about to destroy and collapse on you and i'm telling you that because i'm coughing i'm a canary coughing because i can't breathe because it's so much coal so much coal dust and you thinking about you listening to how you can get some more pussy how you can try to get how you can try to how you can try to uh uh get some more pussy or 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 get some some pussy and then and dump some pussy and get some more pussy this is what this is what you know this is what you 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 focused on instead of wealth no get me wrong i love i love the wop the wop is everything in a bag of chips. But wealth is way more important. Wealth will get you more WAP than you ever dreamed of. WAP make babies. You got to take care of babies. You got to have a legacy and all this other stuff. This is what you need for all that. You need wealth. You need real estate. You need land. You need companies. You need to innovate. You need engineering. You need materials. You need resources, water. You need um, all kind of things, man. I mean, this is what you need. This is wealth. You need all of these things, man. And you can have as much WAP as you want. But the thing is, that ain't that ain't shit. This is the problem right here. I could talk about this to Kingdom Come. I mean, this is a problem, dude. $3,500, man, in average income, and in, I mean, average wealth, 2%, 2% of wealth of the whole freaking country. Black people have 2%. And I promise you it ain't, it ain't niggas talking about pussy and dick on the internet to have 2% of this wealth. I'm sorry. I mean, if you offended by this, man, I, I hope you are. Because this is this is what you I mean, this this problem is is a big problem right here.
the two the people that have that two percent are the some of the the same people that have that one point trillion dollars. One, um, like I said before, man, shout out to Tone Talks. The people that have most of the one point something trillion dollars that black people have are, are the rich families. The rich black families, they have most of this one trillion dollars, eighty percent of it. You're 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 on the lower half of the 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 one point trillion dollars. They have that two percent of the wealth. You you ain't even included in the topic. You ain't even included. We got to do better, man. We got to do better. This is this is terrible. This is this is terrible. This is this ain't good, man. You know, people want to hate people on the internet and have all these beefs and stuff like this when you ain't got no wealth. None. And you and you and you ain't even talking about the fact that you ain't got no wealth. You want to talk about everything, everything going on Sunday. But I'm I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna talk about what people don't talk about. I'm gonna talk about it from now on. And I'm gonna edit this video because I had a sound issue probably like an hour in. I'm gonna edit it, but This is what I'm going to be talking about every Wednesday, Wealth Wednesday. I'm going to talk about wealth, everything that pertains to it, because we got to deal with this shit. We got to deal with this problem. Mondays is market Mondays. Talk about the stock market. Tuesdays is tech talk Tuesdays. You're talking about technology because I do work in tech. Technology. I've been working in technology for over ten years. I'm I'm getting away from all of the nigga shit. Not all of it, but I'm getting away from it. I I you know what? I can't go down the whole rabbit hole again with all that you know pussy dick talk. Like I got no patience for it. I I vowed when I came back to YouTube, this was the channel I had. I vowed not to talk about that as much as not any as i used to on my other channels that i had such as solar scholar i talked about all that bullshit i'm not talking about that like that it's when it comes to wealth the wealthy families i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you a wealthy family i'm gonna show you what i'm what i mean by that and yeah, it, you know, as far as as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to when it comes to that, um, when it when it comes to to you know, she could take all of this and all of that. At the end of the day, when you are leveraged, when you're leveraged, when you have when you have you know, fifty million dollars. If your wife has your children and everything like that, I don't care if she's doing this, doing that, sucking off the pool guy. If she's taking care of your children and everything like that, she's for you. And I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't discount anything as far as uh what some what a woman would do, what your wife would do, or whatever. You know, at the end of the day, if she takes 25 and you got 25 million dollars, what the fuck does it matter as far as she's taking care of your children? She she you worked it out with your lawyer that that 25 that she gets. 
15 of it goes towards your children's um, basically their their estate, their their account when they get 18 or whatever. So when they go to college, they have money. They ain't they ain't gotta they ain't gotta do no fuck shit for no money or no stupid shit for money. They got money. They got they can study and go full fledged in the books, do well. They can learn from you, be be your intern in your company. Worrying about what can happen and all that, what she going to do and all that cool, goofy ass shit. It's, it's concerning. Don't get me wrong. It's very concerning because I know people, I know, I know people, I know family members that their uncle were a millionaire and they got divorced and they got, they got put in a ringer. You know, because it at the end of the day, it comes in it comes to a point where you gotta be you gotta understand this is why I talk about animal hierarchies. You have to be able to select a mate. You have to have mate selection I mean abilities. Okay. It's it's messed up. You this is how bad this is how bad it is, right? So a damn alley cat could pick a goddamn uh, time cat to mate with. The best time cat to mate with. But you telling me you can't find <laughs> you so bad, you so out of your nature that you can't find a, a reputable mate to mate with to have children. A goddamn a geese, a goddamn Canadian goose could pick a, 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 a good goose to stay with her or whatever to raise her eggs, but you can't pick the um right dude or whatever or the dude can't pick the right chick it's really bad if you really break it down to that it it i you know i don't want nobody to be suicidal or anything like that but it's really it really shows how fucked up your nature is or how how much you have been away from nature that you can't even just pick the right dude you can't you don't know when to shut the fuck up and walk away you don't know you don't know how to be as a woman you don't know how to be friendly. You don't know how to be accommodating. You don't know how to be fe uh, uh, feminine or actually be a woman. It's so bad. You don't even know how to be a woman. You don't know how to be yourself. How God made you. You you're you're masculine. You're you're a man. You're not a woman. You're a she man. That that is just you really got to sit and think about this. Like, like I said, sit down and meditate and think about how fucked up you are, how off you are. Because that's why I say, like, like I say, until I'm rich. I own my faults, my weaknesses. That's why I call myself the broke genius. I, I know I'm in, I know I'm intelligent. I know I give myself credit with that, but I'm broke. So I, I, I own my faults until I, like I say, until it changes. So it's like sometimes you you might have a problem, guilt, shame, the need to be right. You might have a problem basically coming to the understanding of where you are as a person. This is how you, that's how you get to that higher level. You recognize how fucked up you are and you write down how fucked up you are. And you change yourself. You know, a lot of people be like, man, why do you talk like this? Why do you use these words? I'm a, I cuss like a sailor because I am I am a sailor. I did. I did. I went to boot camp. I got out of boot camp and I joined. I got on the ship. I got on the fleet. I'm a sailor so I can fucking cuss like a sailor. If it's too, if it's too fucking of, of, of a problem for you, too much of a problem for you, go take your weak ass and go, God damn it, do what you do what weak people do. But sometimes I cuss because I'm frustrated, honestly, because it's some, this is very frustrating, man, to actually deal with these these problems, you know. When I drive around and I see all this poverty and all these neighborhoods, like nine times out of ten, if I if I'm driving through a neighborhood and I see poverty is black people, I already know all oh, pretty much it don't have to even be people outside. 
and it already knows black people because it's already a well-known moniker like the, the, the black people are poor and i just gave you the, the 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 charts and the stats on why and yet people are still happy with failure and i'm not i'm not happy with failure so like I say, sit down, talk, talk about how fucked up you are, you know, because if you if you got yes men around you and yes women around you telling you everything that that you doing is good and you know you're not doing good. That's a problem. That's like being that's the whole epitome of being a frog in a boiling water. And then you got you, you know, the water is still warm. And then somebody around the, the other frogs around you like, you know what? No, you ain't got to jump out the water. You, it, it's fine. It's real. It's real cozy in here. It ain't it ain't nothing but cozy. It's just a little hot girl. Ain't no, ain't no problem. It, it, it's good. It's still good. Meanwhile, it get hotter and hotter, and then you sitting up dead in the motherfucking doorknob because, goddamn it, the hot the water got boiling on your ass. This is what I'm talking about, man. You gotta, you gotta take the good and the bad. Iron sharpens iron, so I mean metal sharpens metal. You know that's metal. Metal, uh, it's called metallurgy. Metallurgy. That's how you make. That's that's what. It's how you sharpen your sword. You lose. You use a a, 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 a hard, rough, porous stone to sh to make your sh your sword smooth and sharp and deadly. That's how you gotta do it. You gotta, you know. I'm the look at me as the rough, coarse stone to sharpen your blade, to sharpen you up, to make you that that damn sharp blade because that's what i go to if i can't if if i'm looking for any article or if i'm looking at a video to watch i'm trying to find somebody that can sharpen me up to make me that sharp blade you know what i'm saying so i mean this is that's what i'm talking about but i'm gonna show you this guy i'm gonna first show you his wife now i'm gonna play his wife this is well. First, I'm gonna play him. Let him let you hear what he's talking about. Play play a few a few minutes of him talking. Now this is this is a this is a high value man. This guy he went to Harvard Law. Uh, he is a. Uh, 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 he will. He was a lawyer. If, if he if he's not retired, I, I I think he's still working. He's a lawyer. He's a high value man, basically, right? He's um he's a member of Jack and Jill. He was a he, his 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 parents were um like you know in the organizations the the Masons uh, organization or whatever um secret society or whatever um he's a uh jack and he's one of he's a jack uh and jill uh member you know so he's trained on on black on how to be black and proper in in, in society he's he's trained into this. he's groomed into this now i'm gonna play this a question we've discussed on this show from time to time is will whites and blacks ever get along in america a provocative commentator on the topic of race in this country, Lawrence Otis Graham, has written a provocative book in an attempt to answer that question, I think. It's called Member of the Club. I have it here. You'll see it on your screen. It's very interesting. Uh, the research and undercover work he conducted to come by the stories in the book, quite fascinating. He is a lawyer, which we will not hold against him because he's now become an author and a spokesman. He's also a law professor, which I guess we have to hold against him a little bit. Lawrence Otis Graham. Lawrence, welcome to the show. It's great to be here, Roger. Okay. Uh, it's 2005. This you went undercover at a white country club, right? Right, in Greenwich, Connecticut. How many other people were African Americans working there? Were there a lot? Was there were none. There were none. You were the only one? I was the only one, and what's so surprising, this is, that was 1992, and what was so surprising was that I had actually interviewed for a waiter job 
and at five country clubs in addition to the Greenwich Country Club, all in Greenwich, Connecticut. And over the telephone, they told me that they had five waiter positions open. I have gave them this this waiter's resume, this fictional resume. And over the phone, they said I sounded like an ideal candidate and articulate and hardworking. But when I got to the clubs, each of them refused to take my application and was actually- Isn't that illegal today? Well, of course it is. The interesting thing about it was that it was at the third callback interview that the Greenwich Country Club said to me, we've discussed it here and we'd feel more comfortable if you would accept a busboy job as opposed to a waiter job. And I haven't been in the business, but I can imagine how unusual it is to have a third callback interview for a waiter job. So um, I worked as a busboy, but I was the only black person. Now, uh, on the phone, they, they, they thought you sounded what? Well, I imagine they thought that I sounded not black because that's what, uh, when I was actually there, I was serving a group of women and asking them if they wanted coffee, a cream for their coffee. And one of them looked up at me and smiled and she said, you know, Lawrence, and they were very nice to me. She said, Lawrence, you know, you have the diction of an educated white man. And she smiled, and I thought it was a joke. And I looked around at the other women at the table, and they all nodded in agreement. And in their eyes, this was a compliment. And so it's sort of hard for me to say that these are outright hostile racists or anything like that, because they're not that. But what they were is what I feel is passive racist, people that say things that don't realize how offensive and insulting they really are. Well, uh is there a problem with black speech? I, I run a company, I, I ran a company before I had this job, where people would send me uh, candidates for receptionist. And oftentimes, African Americans or, or other nationalities would come. And they did not speak as clearly. And clearly in a receptionist job, you wanted somebody who could speak Communicate, very, clear, right, sure. very clearly. This was a big problem because we were trying to get somebody wouldn't have mattered the color. What we're trying to do is get a voice sure. that, that represented the firm. But unfortunately, I think some African Americans may, may have been rejected on the speech thing. Yet, there are many African Americans who teach black speech in Well, who colleges. accept and feel that this, this different speech pattern is acceptable. But um, my feeling is that you might be the progressive, open-minded person that says that I'm willing to hire a black person as, so long as they can communicate properly and effectively. But the problem but is, is it racist of me to want them to communicate Using correct grammar? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Right. It's not. It's okay. not. But the, the danger is, I mean, I was clearly using correct grammar because I was speaking in the same way that I'm speaking to you, both on the phone and when I saw these people in person. The problem was that they did not want someone of of, of, of black background to be working there. And the unfortunate aspect about it is that there was a history there. I mean, the name of the dormitory on the grounds of that country club was called the Monkey House. And people kept asking me, Lawrence, are you gonna live in the Monkey House? Are you gonna live in the Monkey House while you're working at the club? And I said, well, why is the dormitory called the Monkey House? And one of the waiters, a white guy in his early 20s said, well, it's called that because you know all these jobs before the 1970s were held by black people. And since all the black workers lived there, we just naturally called it the Monkey House. And what I found surprising was that I thought that club members would deny that that was true after the story first came out in New York Magazine. And of course, it's now reprinted as the first chapter of the book. But what happened was people wrote in, one woman wrote into New York Magazine and said, I am offended by the way Mr. Graham mischaracterized our club. Um, the Monkey House is a very nice facility that has bathrooms and kitchens for every person that lives there. <laughs> And she, she was missed like, the whole point. totally, completely missed, missed, missed the, the point. point. So this is what I'm saying is that people, and it's not that I have anything against country clubs, it's just that clubs are an important and effective opportunity for people to network in. As a black lawyer in New York City and with other black friends who are bankers and lawyers, we want the opportunity to network with these people too. Okay, that's only fair. A lot more coming right up. This is the uh, book, Member of the Club. We'll be right back. We're talking uh, with an attorney, a law school professor, and author of Member of the Club, Lawrence Otis Graham. He was also named Outstanding Young Lawyer of the Year by the American Bar Association. Before we come back to your book, one one line on OJ trial. I mean, I saw that the, the uh, attorney for the prosecution in the paper this morning said, I'm out of the law. I hate this. This is terrible. This is embarrassing. What would you think of that? 
I think it's reckless and irresponsible. I, I think that Darden is probably a very good prosecutor, but the problem is he knew that going in, this is not the first trial he ever was involved in. But it, for me, it's opening up another can of worms because for me, it's a very black-white issue, this whole trial anyway. Yeah. And I think that a lot of the black community got behind O.J. Simpson initially because they said this is the railroading of a black man. And this is where I part company. I consider myself a liberal in, in, in every respect, but I am troubled when the black community gets behind someone simply because of the color of their skin. I mean, aren't you and a little bit suspicious as a lawyer? There's a lot of evidence. There, there certainly a is. A lot all over North America. Even beyond that, I don't feel that I think that blacks, as we choose the people that we support, whether they are leaders or mentors or role models, he's never been someone who has really contributed to the black community. I think that he abandoned the black community long ago. I talk about this whole issue of, I wrote one of the... So, yeah, this is this is uh, Lawrence Otis Graham, and that uh, white guy, of course, is Roger Ailes. Uh, he is dead. He's one of the owners of Fox News, um, millionaire, uh, white guy, whatever. But um, no, I said I said Lawrence Otis Graham is a, a ninety-two octane guy. No, he's a hundred octane. This is his wife here. This is this is his wife. So. When I say wealth, part of wealth is having a spouse that is on the same level as you. Okay, that's that's one of the keys as well. Or can 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 be teachable, meaning you could teach her. This is his wife. Pamela Thomas Graham, welcome to GLG. Thank you. Great to be here. In terms of your career, what does... Pause, I will say time out on the hyphen shit. Thomas Graham type stuff. Nah, if you, if if I actually did get married again, you ain't putting no minus sign above my name. You could just, you could just keep your shit, as far as I'm concerned, you just keep yourself over there. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't, the hyphen, I'm not down with the hyphen, but anyway decisions stand out as the moments that you're proudest of? The decisions that I'm most proud of collectively have to do with my being able to create opportunities for other people, particularly people that might have been overlooked. Many, but not all, were women or people of color. And I just feel proud of myself for being able to just say, you know what? I was lucky enough to have someone open a door for me. I'm now going to open a door for you. And I think that's that's an obligation we all have. And you chose a career at McKinsey, probably the most prestigious management consulting firm, where you then went on to become the first African-American woman to be made partner there. Mm -hmm. Tell me about why you chose McKinsey mm -hmm. and, and what that experience was like for you. Coming up through the ranks at McKinsey, most of the clients were Fortune 500 CEOs and people weren't sure if those people would take advice from a black woman. And I can tell you some of my clients, I was the first black woman that they actually had ever really known. Some of them had a housekeeper who was a black woman. Some of them had nobody in their life. So I think that uh, one of the biggest challenges for anybody who comes to the, a corporate or business environment as a little bit different or different in some obvious ways is how to embrace that difference. Is that a conscious thing you did or did it just happen or? Well, so I guess what I would say is that part of the reason they value you is because you have a different perspective and everything you do is going to get noticed. So the downside of that is if you make a mistake, everybody's going to say, mm, you see, we told you, you know, that this person was not really up for this. But, but if you do a good job, I guarantee you, if you're different, everybody's also going to be talking about that. And that's, you know, a good thing in corporate life. I found that it actually made it easier for me to counsel them because it wasn't an ego thing. I could come in and just say, I'm just trying to help you be successful. And here's what I see. And that actually worked, but I, I believe it is harder. I had a client once who used the N-word in a meeting with me. And the amount of level of racism in corporate America is astounding. I mean, I, I, you just, it's mind blowing. But notice the way she looks. Okay, she's, I mean, they, these are 50 year old, they, she's like 50 something years old. They have three children together. 
these these are millionaires. These are black millionaires. These are these are the zero point one percenters. Zero point zero one percenters. She 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 doesn't have any weave on. No hair hats. Now I'm not against weave because I'm a historian. Wigs go back to ancient Egypt. The reason they wear wore wigs though was because they had fleas. They had a flea problem. Okay, so they in the pyramids and living their life and walking around and they had fleas. They used to bite their scalp. They used to go bald because they were, you know, getting, you know, they were uh getting bit by these fleas. So they they would basically wear a wig. And it was also a costume. It was a, it was sort of like a costume. So that's what they did. But not everyone wore wigs, right? So it's like I believe natural beauty is natural beauty. So what you're born with is what you should have, and you should enhance it as best as you can. So she has she she straight she straightens her hair obviously, but it's her hair. Does she have on pants? No, she doesn't have any pants on. She has on a nice dress. She, she's, you know, well covered for the most part. This is a typical black American woman or Americana type of dress, right? Now, I mean, I'm, I'm more of, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm kind of on the Afrocentric side. Or people say hotep or whatever, but you know, pretty much Imhotep, where that term comes from, is he's the father, the doctor of medicine. He's the father of modern medicine. He's he's a he's a genius. He was a he he was uh, basically they used to worship him as a god. He was so he was so basically high up there. Okay, he was he was a scientist. He was a god. He was a doctor. Okay, you should every if everyone strive to be like M Hotel, we wouldn't have these problems. He was a, he was a black ruler genius. Okay, so when people talk about M Hotel in a bad light or a negative light or a Hotel, right? I, it just it just I just be like, wow, you know, these same people. If they created a personal capital account, most likely their net worth would be negative. If you put in what they owe for their mortgage, all their accounts, and you 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 balance it out, because he see here's the thing: if somebody told if somebody came to me and they asked me. They told me that they were high value. I need to see receipts. I need to see receipts because that shouldn't be no problem. If you say you actually, if you make now, if you, if you shown yourself, if you shown videos of actual things that you've done, like, for example, I listened to a guy, I mean, a guy by the name of MOT. I definitely believe the MOT is a hundred plus thousand dollar man. I believe, I believe so. Now, other people be saying they 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 quote unquote high value, but they not, okay. And you know, it's like basically, I say that to say these same people that talk about hotel or whatever are really are really broke, and 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 it diminishes your value. Yes, if you broke, yeah, you you bro you it 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 is what it is, but. So for you to be talking about Imhotep in a bad light, it just shows how 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 stupid you are, okay? Because um, you know, I say all that to say that yeah, I'm, I'm I, I like women that actually wear Afrocentric type dress too, but I like women that dress like this too. She's feminine, you know, she's a woman. I mean, I it ain't nothing like a woman, man. It's just nothing like it. 
it's nothing like a woman, man. I'm talking about a woman. You know, it just it just it just makes me feel some type of way. And I ain't try, <laughs> I ain't trying to harp on this man wife, but I mean this is this is what I look for, right? This is like type of stuff I look for. And that was a moment. <laughs> Just try, well, it's interesting. One of the life lessons I learned around that was I didn't call him out on it in real time in the discussion, but after the meeting ended, I kind of pulled him aside. I said, look, you know, here's how I feel when you use a word like that, even as, you know, like slang. And I let him know, like, you're my client, but, but this is more important than any client relationship. This is about being a, a leader and a human being, and you can't, you can't do that. And then he became like one of my best clients. That was a teachable moment for him, though. Yeah, and so the thing is, you know, you can be angry and you can be frustrated, but if you really actually want to change people's behavior, you have to meet them where they are. So you were there 10 years at McKinsey, and then I heard you had to go run something. Is that kind of <laughs> a good summary of what happened? It's funny, again, in terms of how, like, how decisions get made. I went out to lunch with someone who had been at McKinsey, had left after 15 years. And I said, so what's it like on the other side? He said, it's actually, it's completely different. And if you want to run something, he's like, you should leave now. <laughs> so I literally came back from that lunch and I started looking for an operating job. And you ended so, up first at the technology part of a media company and then running an entire media company, CNBC. Yeah, and I became the CEO of CNBC about six weeks before 9-11. It was definitely a lot of learning. So you've done consulting, mm -hmm. media, and technology, and then, of course, you wake up one morning and you say, I need a career in banking. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is this man's wife. That's, a, that's, that's my, that, that um, my um, friends are, that is what a high-value woman is, right? So... 92 octane 100 octane woman um they both climbed the corporate ladder um they started off as 92s and got up to 100 octane they're millionaires black millionaires um you you can be single and also be a millionaire don't get me wrong i i um you could be wealthy and also be single um that that is definitely okay but you are not made to live alone i don't i don't agree with that and uh <clears throat> you know having having someone to take care of your children to help you rear your children is just goes into a whole can of things that is just just you know basically basic stuff tomorrow i'm going to be going into africans in europe i'm going to be talking about a lot of kings and queens that you didn't even know were black because they were whitewashed um let me go let me go to the forbes list because i've, I've I had some sound issues before but um basically we got two we got two new billionaires in this country actually two new uh black billionaires from this pandemic first it was Kanye now Tyler Perry just just crossed the billionaire mark just as recently as this week uh, became public that he is now a billionaire this this list is not updated um it's not it's not that many black billionaires um to count let's see what they have this is last updated of 2019 so um this guy he's the richest guy in the world he's a nigerian businessman he's into construction he's he's into a, quite a bit of stuff see i said this before there's a lot of things i said because the sound was was messed up but i was basically saying that 
black people, the reason why, you know, Haiti is messed up is because black people don't support Haiti. And the same reason why black people are poor is because black people don't support each other. You got a big problem with that. And and it's like basically, yeah, I mean, black people, when they go on a trip, they go to Jamaica, they go to the Bahamas. They even is even black people that go to the Bermuda. And I can't understand that shit for the life of me because you got the Bermuda Triangle is is it's it's called the Bermuda Triangle is next to the island of Bermuda. Now, these are all islands that are populated by black people. Don't get me wrong. But then they overlook Haiti. And it's like, I have a problem with that. Um, as I'm getting older, I, I just see that just bogus, like backwards. Because, you know, Haiti's trying to, you know, it's a, a country that basically won its independence through through war, which which war with one of the one of the strongest European nations on on, on earth, which is France. Yet they um they don't they don't get no support, man. They, they they tried to go to Africa to join the African Union, but Africa's like, no, you're not African. You're not an African country. We're not gonna accept you in the Union. Which I understand that. Um, I'm I'm African. Um, you know, so I'm also African American. Which the fact that they, it's even a difference is really fucked up. But anyway, um, it's like it's like pretty much uh. It's it's like I look at it from the standpoint is that they're not necessarily an African country. You I think the Haitians should look at the people in the diaspora, such as uh, black people in Europe, the United States and South America and primarily people in the United States. And it should be some type of travel back and forth from the United States to, to, to Haiti. And, you know, Fixing that 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 poverty issue in Haiti is is a, is a huge deal. Now it's a lot of Haitians that are in America. They should also um, support Haiti as well. Now I'm not Haitian, um, but that being said, this guy right here, he is one of the richest black um, um, uh, black men in the world. He's uh, you know Nigerian and when it comes to black people that they say like, you know, they have these like hangups, these like mental hangups and they don't want to go to Africa or whatever. Cause they say, Oh, you know, Africans don't like, like us or, um, and then they also say, you know, hey, we don't have no homeland. <laughs> I mean, last time I checked, these same people are darker than me, and it's like it's just it's just crazy, man. You know, I see, I I, I hear all of this 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 stuff, and it's like, okay, so if they don't like you, what about the people that you know primarily? I don't know, ancestors enslaved you. You think they like you better? <laughs> I mean, it just it just it's just so so stupid. But um, it's like at the same time, you know, um. You know, these people have these, a lot of these Africans, they have money that and they have resources that you could tap into. You could just give them a better price than what the Europeans give them and then make money in the process. But yet you're missing out on that boat. And it goes back to that whole why you only have two percent of the whole fucking country's wealth and three thousand dollars of average wealth. You know what I'm saying? This is this, this is wealth Wednesdays. This is this is why you you have these problems so um that being said we're gonna go to the um, list or whatever of black billionaires we're gonna close this out uh let's see here they say it's 13 billionaires this is of uh january 13th but we have to add a couple people on the list um Robert Smith is on there. Um, Oprah is on there. David Stewart. A lot of people don't know who this guy is. Need to know this guy. I work in IT. 
Okay. I actually worked for a company that had a contract. I actually worked with this company. Um, I've worked with his company. I have, to, I have the privilege to actually work for, for this company on a project a um, couple years back. So David Stewart, he's a black billionaire that has an IT company. Okay, so his company is Worldwide Technology. Okay, and he's from Chicago. Man, I need to talk to this brother. <laughs> Shit. Um, you know, $3.9 billion. Okay. Um, you know, he's uh he's on 745 list of of, of billionaires. And uh yeah, man, old money, um, you know, old alpha male, he you know, smart brother started a um IT company years ago, man. There you go. You know what I'm saying? This is this is that dude. Okay, but people people always talk about Robert Smith, which Robert Smith is cold. Because Robert Smith, what Robert Smith will did, he bought companies. He's an investment broker. So investment background, he he bought companies. So um we gonna we gonna break down we gonna first go to Kanye. Shout out to 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 to, to Ye, another another Chicago guy. Okay, I know people don't like him because he's like an avid Trump supporter and all that type of stuff. But one thing about what one thing about Trump and and and, and also Kanye, they're Gemini's. So one day they say some crazy shit, then another day they say some smart shit because. Basically, you have the dualities, and then you also have Mercury. Mercury is uh, it's the the planet, and then actually the substance Mercury. You you literally, if you consume it, you literally lose your mind. Okay, uh, you know Mercury. This you know Mercury is a uh, Virgo and Gemini. A lot of these people, man, go just they go crazy sometimes. A lot of times, you know, Gemini's have that evil twin and a positive twin. That's Gemini. Kanye, no different. Very smart individuals. Okay, from Chicago, uh, Kanye. He started off. He went to Atlanta, and he he literally started off basically as like a young fledgling ghostwriter. He was he Kanye. A lot of people didn't. I didn't even know who he was until he first came out with that song. And to be honest with you, I really didn't like that song. Slow jams. I really uh, I was like, uh, but they just kept playing it and playing it and playing it. And, and then I didn't even like I didn't even like through the wire. I didn't really through the wire was like, uh, I ain't even like it. To be honest with you. I, and I was like, who the hell is this? Who the who? Who the who? Like this, like 2000, 2004, 2005, something like that. They they like who? Oh, who is this dude? They keep talking about Kanye West. Like who's this African sounding name or whatever? I'm like, who is this guy? And I'm hearing it. You know, I, I had like a a a, 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 mer, um, a Mustang, drop top Mustang, and I hear you know listening to the radio. And I'm like, man, who is this dude? They keep talking about Kanye West. And they keep playing this song through the wire, through the wire. Next thing I know, start looking into it. Then, then one of my friends, a lot of my friends I came up with, they were Gemini's. My friends at Gemini, he was like, this Kanye, he uh he he showed me Jay-Z album cover. And I'm seeing the album cover and then the credits, and it got Kanye on it. Kanye, Kanye, wrote and produced Kanye. So, so it's like basically he a lot of the rhymes that people that Jay Z came out with, he produced it, right? So he he got he he was first in the shadows. See, like like basically like when I when I talk about I, I made a meme and I was like basically basically you gotta you gotta get with a 
you got to get with like like in a in a in a song of Wu Tang, you get with a sick tight click and you go all out. Like you you get with a group of people and you just you know what I'm saying you 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 basically go all out and then you know what I'm saying you get you you get on. It's your opportunity to shine. You shine. So that's what that's it's no different than what Kanye did. Kanye, he was rapping and producing, and then basically for other people making songs, you know, basically uh producing uh tracks for them. Then he got the opportunity to make his own album, his own production, boom. Then you know, he he got into fashion. He got he got deals with Nike with the Kanye Yeezys and the other shoes and stuff that is super expensive. Long story short, he's a billionaire. Okay, so that that's that's Kanye. Um, hope he hope he makes even more money. Very talented, smart guy. He went to a art he went to an art school. A private art school in Chicago. His mother actually, she was an English teacher at the school I went to. I went to Chicago State University. She was an English teacher. So Kanye actually came. No, actually, it wasn't Kanye, but um Common and Talib Kwali, their mother came up there, and then they both came up there and they gave a speech. And Kanye mother's mother was there, and she also talked, but Kanye wasn't there. But anywho, um, yeah, so that's kind easy billionaire, black billionaire. Let's let's go to Tyler Perry. Unfortunately, because I've I've been holding weight for for years, people be saying people say I look like Tyler Perry and I don't like this. <laughs> I, I be I be unhappy about when people say that. Cause that mean I need to lose weight. Cause I, I, you know what I'm saying? But, but any event, shout out to Tyler Perry. Okay. I don't, I'm be honest with you. I'm, you know, I never went to, to see a play or whatever. Um, I don't really, I like the Medea character, but then I don't like it. Okay. The Medea character to me kind of portrays the whole, she male masculine woman type character transsexual energy type stuff too it's like it's the dichotomy of it all i i don't i don't like it okay now um but it, it, he the character is funny you know it is funny um so you know he one thing about tyler perry he he's a virgo his birthday is uh September 13. Um so he uh he was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um he started off like I said, he started off doing plays, man. He was homeless. This guy, you know, T Tyler Perry, man, was homeless at one time. He was sleeping in his car depending on hoping that he could get a play to make some money. So he started off doing these little plays or whatever, right? So then he he got more and more momentum with that, and more and more momentum with that, and then next thing you know, he started getting you know TV deals and start getting movie deals, and then and then he was like, you know what? I'm gonna rip this whole thing apart. I'm gonna just just go straight down the middle with it. He he created his own movie company. His movie, I mean, um, his own film set or whatever, or, 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 or um, movie production studio. He 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 did something like basically like Harley. No, I think no other black guy has or woman has their own film production studio. He did that. Then next thing you you see you see how people make moves, right? I say, make your next move your best move. He made his own movie production studio. You know what I'm saying? And basically, man, I mean, it paid off, man. Dude is a billionaire. I mean, as of this week, it, it, it became public. He is a billionaire. 
Now, I know all the other stuff about sexual orientation and all that crap. At the end of the day, the way I look at it is, it's what you do for the people. One thing about this man, like I like with Kanye as well, that Mercury Power, this man done put on people, back on people that, but like put people on that fell off. I mean, like for example, uh Keisha and I Pulliam, uh Rudy from the from the Cosby show that I had a crush on when I was coming up. He put her back on. She wasn't getting that much that many TV and movie roles. Then then he put on he put on um um a lot of other actors that like were pretty big in the 80s and in 90s and stuff like that. He put them back on. He got them working and eating. You know what I'm saying? He got he got a lot of people that fell off. You know what I'm saying? He put them back on and gave them TV roles and movie roles. And what Kanye did was he put artists on that were like kind of like small time but or they were mainstream but they weren't big and put them on the map. Right, like Twister. Um, he put on he put on common, you know what I'm saying? He put like when he this song I put on for my city, he literally that's what he did. He put these guys on a mainstream map, like he he made them stars that everybody know from from just not just a Midwest or a Chicago thing, but he put a he put them on the world so the world knows them. You know what I'm saying? So he like you we join join our tour. You know what I'm saying? Join, you know what I'm saying? He produced their album. And then next thing you know, they got they going platinum for the first time in their life and stuff like that. This is what Kanye did. This is what these are this is this is the power of these black black men that are billionaires. What they did, they you that that Mercury power, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? This is this is the month of Virgo. I got to talk about that Mercury power, dude. You know what I'm saying? Take all of the bad shit they do or whoever the fuck they be with or whoever that shit. Now, nah, these dudes are powerful. They use that. They got that Mercury power. They 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 got, you know what I'm saying? They're intelligent. And then, and then next thing you know, they make the right moves and boom, they're billionaires. So I, I got to edit this video. This is it. I'm done talking. Um, you know what I'm saying? This is this is this is the 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 end of this all this wealth Wednesday. Um I think this is the longest video I've done, but uh I'm gonna edit this one out, put it back on for you. I'm gonna be talking about wealth every Wednesday. I'll try my best um to to stick with the schedule and um Next Monday, I'll be talking about the markets. I'll go over my Robin Hood challenge and I'll go over the markets and where it's moving and stuff. We're going we gonna to get this flow going, man. This channel, man, you know, I'm I'm going to get I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it, you know, where it's like, you know, pretty much, you know, it's, it's some good stuff going. You know, it, I'm going to make it where, you know, you it's a place you want to come every week. You know what I'm saying? Instead of talking about the other rah-rah stuff, you know, we're going to we're going to get back to. The, the 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 main important topics you know market tech talk tuesdays wealth wednesdays this is the broke genius make your next move your best move i'm out